come along for a tour of some of Connecticut's historic gardens. We are going to begin with the sunken gardens that are at the Hillstead Museum in the town of Farmington, Connecticut. We are here in the sunken gardens in the Hillstead Museum and today is Garden Day in the state of Connecticut, so 15 different historic homes have opened up to do garden tours. And so I'm going to take you through the Sunken Garden, where they do poetry readings here. There's also music playing in the gardens, but let me take you through. The gardens, the Sunken Gardens, are symmetrical, and I'm going to do a quick walk through. And uh, there's a lot of bees here on the lavenders. I'll try to see if I get some close-ups there for you. There you go, we got a few. There's also some butterflies here in the garden. So right behind me is another patch of lavenders. I'm going to do a little pivot so you can see lavenders on this side. So we try to keep everything here symmetrical and uh, continue to do a walkthrough and show you each of the different landscaped areas in the sunken gardens. So let us continue. There's some beautiful rose bushes. I'll try to show you those coming up. And I'll try to do some long shots also for you to see the beautiful gardens here at Hillstead. This is a really incredible site for weddings. Behind that stone wall, you'll see a white tent. Uh, basically, it looks like clouds <laughs> blending in there. But that tent is usually used for weddings at the beautiful uh, Hillstead. And it's called the Hillstead because it's on a hill. And when uh, Theodate Pope uh, Riddle built this home here as a retirement home for her parents, she notices on the hill, and it was a homestead. So she asked that it not be named after her, but it be named Hillstead instead. Now, uh, as some of you may know, uh, Theodore uh, Pope Riddle was the first uh, female architect in the United States. And she did go to school here in Farmington and loved this area and fell in love with it. So she built her Greek revival home here, which I'll show you. It's a fantastic museum today with a lot of different antiques and famous paintings by artists such as Degas, Monet, Manet, and so on. And incredible antiques throughout the whole entire home. So I'm going to come up there a little bit. I just wanted to walk you through the sunken gardens. In the summertime, there are weekly poetry readings here, so it is a beautiful setting. And uh, they are doing tours, garden tours here today. These are bellflowers they're looking at right now. I'll try to show you some of the um, ones up close so you can see why they are called bellflowers. I think you're getting a very nice view right there. Um, there's a bee climbing into that one. And the bees are not bothering us. They're more interested in the pollen inside uh, the flowers. So I'll walk around and show you a little bit more. There's nice roses here. I'm going to do a little close-up here of the roses. And I'll do a few more close-ups of a few of the other uh, plants here in the sunken gardens. Right back there is the home, as you can see, which is a museum today. It is listed as the National Registry of Historic Sites. Some more bellflowers here. I think you can hear the musician in the background. We have some rabbit, rabbit ear furs in through here. The bees are having a very good time in here, um, in this area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step back and uh, give you a little bit more of a view so you can see how this is indeed a sunken garden. And we're going to actually walk up the steps um, on this brick path. So I'm going to be turning around to do that and uh, we have a lot of boxwood right there that grow very easily in Connecticut. These are Japanese holly bushes that we're looking at and I'm going to walk up the steps here where you can get a very nice view of the hillstead and I want to also show you the view from the hill before we leave the sunken garden and our next stop on the Star Garden Tour today will be at the Stanley Whitman, which is also right here in Farmington. So you can see it's set up here for a wedding. I'm just gonna walk around to the front of the home. Uh, and this is the front entrance into the museum that we're looking at. 
and I'm going to walk around to the front. There's these beautiful places to relax out here on the porch. In fact, there are a few people doing that just now. Uh, so it was a wedding here last night. There will not be one here this evening, but you can see why it's a beautiful spot for a wedding. And people that want to have weddings here need to book it way ahead of time. A uh, very popular spot, especially in the fall. So we are coming to the top of the hill. It looks like there's some flowers left over from last night's wedding. So I'll walk you up and show you those. These floral arrangements are amazing. Let me just pause there. They're incredible. Just beautiful. Okay, and I'm going to step over a little bit now. I'll try to keep the house in the background and walk to the top of the hill. Uh, and you get a beautiful view of the Farmington Valley. So the, what you're looking at now, of course, are the poles uh, holding up this tent. Great place for weddings. And uh, also sometimes they have silent auctions here and other fundraising events. This is on the National Registry of Historic uh, Sites, I'm proud to say. And so wait till you see the view of the hillside. You could actually see the mountains out that way. We're looking toward the Berkshire Mountains. And I'm just going to walk around to the another side of the house. Sometimes you could peek in the windows. Uh, probably not going to do that right now. I'm um, just wanting to walk around and come back to the sunken garden and then continue my tour today of as many of the historic gardens as I can. Um, this is one of my favorite places, the Hillstead in Farmington. So let me just pause here and you can see the beautiful views. And as I said, a great time to come here it is in the fall. If I do a pan, you can imagine all the different colors we would see out here. Just incredible. So I'm going to come back to the sunken garden. I'll try to show you a little bit more of the house as I'm walking. And uh, there's actually an artist down that way. I don't think you can quite see her easel. Who's doing a painting of the house with these beautiful rock walls that surround the whole house. So I'm going to walk back around to the sunken garden. And uh, then, as I said, I'm going to move on to do another little video at the next historic garden that I go to. So I'll. Uh, We'll be walking around here. I'm trying to give you a view so you could see the pillars here and the columns that are Greek Revival style. And I'm keeping it right now on the hill as we're walking. Here we are again looking at the wedding tent and we're going to go back to the sunken garden. And so the sunken garden is right over that stone wall. And I'm going to stop at the top of the steps and give you a bird's eye view of the sunken garden which in the summertime is very popular for uh, poetry readings and also uh, as well people like to come before the poetry reading and picnic in the sunken gardens so we're going to take a little short stroll back here and uh, pause at the top so you can see what I'm talking about when I say the sunken garden. Again, because it's this, uh, today is a special event, uh, you'll see a few people right there uh, that are starting their garden tour. And let's stop right here so you get a nice view of the sunken gardens. I'm going to step back a little bit so you can really see that this is a sunken garden. Okay. We are leaving the Hillstead Museum. And our next stop will be Stanley Whitman right down the road from here. We now begin our tour at the Stanley Whitman House. We are here at the Stanley Whitman House in Farmington, Connecticut. And we are looking right now at a 17th century English settler's garden. And so we have restored it and planted here different kinds of annuals and perennials that would have been the types of plants that would have been here at that time. So we'll do a little tour around and stop at different places. At the time that this house was inhabited here in Farmington, Farmington was actually called at that time Tunxis Plantation and was actually named after the Native Americans who lived in this area. So let me tour you around and show you some of the things we have here in the 17th century restored garden. Of course, the home is from the 17th century. So we'll kind of come up close. Many of the plants here 
had various kinds of purposes for uh, medical reasons, for instance. Uh, some of them, of course, were decorative. Uh, so I'm going to show you around and uh, give you a little tour here of Stanley Whitman. And you can see the home there in the background. There's some beautiful daylilies behind me which are coming into bloom now here in Connecticut. So this has been my third stop in the historic garden tour today that's being run throughout Connecticut. I primarily have stayed in the Hartford Farmington area uh, and uh, been having a wonderful day. We have perfect weather for uh, the historic gardens. So again, this is a Stanley Whitman house. Uh, we can poke in there a little bit and you can see some of the house and uh, we'll just poke around and take a look at some of uh, the plants that are here. There's an 18th century garden on the other side which we could take a look at as well. We have some dill here that's actually flowering. And we'll come to some of the beds here. So you have to imagine back at the time of the 17th century when the English settlers actually were in this area, uh, how the gardens would be really used for practical purposes, not necessarily just decorative purposes. We do have a rose bush here though, however, and I'll try to show you some views of that. And I'm just going to come around to the back of the house and uh, give a view of the garden from there. There's also an 18th century garden on the other side, and I will give you a view of that as well. Um, inside, you can do tours of the house. Um, it's fully restored. It's a beautiful, beautiful house, and I'm trying to give you a view of it here. And I think we're getting a nice view of the gardens here and the beds. And we will now go and take a peek at the 18th century dooryard garden, which is in the main entrance to the Stanley Whitman house here. So uh, we're going to walk around and uh, show you that area. There's also a nice bench over there to sit and enjoy. So uh, we'll be going moving on. At the front of the house is the 18th century garden, and here we see a couple of photos of that garden. And we now move on to the Harry Petrus Stowe House in Hartford, Connecticut. We're at the Harry Petrus Stowe Center here. Harry Petrus Stowe, when she lived in this cottage here in Hartford, was a lover of gardening, and uh, her house here and gardens are part of a national landmark and the gardens are listed in the Connecticut Garden Society. So we're going to take a poke around the house. We're looking at the rear of the house right now. It is a circular garden and it is very much today reproduced to look like Victorian gardens in a circle and a semicircle with crescents. And so what we see in this garden does change seasonally. Earlier in the spring we would have tulips in the garden. But this time of the year, we're looking primarily at petunias and marigolds. I'm going to now walk you down a path to see some more of her garden as we go through. So imagine her living here. And of course, the kinds of plants she had here might have differed. Uh, but we will get the sense of how she manicured the garden here. So as we stop here, this is really facing again the door. That would be the entranceway into the rear of her house. And we are now leaving her backyard and walking down a blue stone pathway, a slate blue stone pathway. And we'll see a variety of different plants and flowers in through here. We have some daylilies right here and we'll proceed along. Primarily I wanted to dedicate this to the work that Harriet Beecher Stowe did, well, not only in terms of gardening, but of course in terms of the suffrage movement and uh, the anti-slavery movement. We are now walking to the front of the house. Uh, we will get another sense of some of the gardens that would have been planted here. And um, we'll get, this is the front staircase that we're looking at right here. There's a few steps in and we'll continue along the path. Uh, we are in downtown Hartford. Uh, Farmington Avenue is right in front of us. And so she did have an herb garden, but also a decorative garden. So this is the front entrance into the house. 
and you're going down the slate path. We have a lot of ferns in through here. And we're also coming into a shaded area. There's another Victorian circular garden that we'll stop and take a look at, which is right over here. And we have some coleus in here and Daisy Miller's in through this area. And again, we have that circular pen that was very common of Victorian gardens. And we will now actually move over to the side of the house where we have some shrubs growing in through here, some perennials. And I'll give you another view of the house as we go. Lots of ferns coming in this way where it's very shaded. And they're doing incredibly well right here. This area back here is filled with different trees some of which were here at the time that Harry Beecher Stowe lived here. And I'm now walking you over to another area. What we're walking to right now is the Day House. Uh, this at one time was owned by a very wealthy lawyer in Hartford who was trying to compete with Mark Twain's house, which is right across the way. So I'll show you some of the garden here. Right now, this is the front of the Catherine Seymour Day House, right where that porch is. I mean, a variety of different plants in through here. Some are annuals and some are perennials. Uh, some of the perennials, for instance, are those stillbees that we're looking at right there. You have a few uh, zinnias in through here. And this is a slate path in there. You can walk right in the middle. Um, I'm walking along a slate path that's circular that borders the garden. And I will show you the entranceway to the Jay House in a minute. I just want to give you a nice view of this garden here. We are now at the very front of the day house. And uh, I'm going to walk down the slate path briefly. And continue along the path. You can see the slate in through here. It makes it very easy to walk through the garden this way. And we still have some pansies that are in bloom right here at the very edge of the garden here. And I'm going to pan up and give you another view of the day house. And you can see the chimney up that way. Beautiful day here in Hartford, Connecticut. Behind me, of course, is the Mark Twain house. So we're going to finish uh, touring the gardens here by coming back around to the Victorian garden that would have been similar to what Harry Beecher Stowe would have had in her backyard at the time that she lived here. As you can see, we're at the Stowe Visitor Center. And let me come back around this other slate path as we're walking back toward the house. And we will take a look at the Victorian circular garden. There's also some beautiful hanging baskets on the back porch here. And I am going to walk around the circular garden. It is uh, set up with bricks on the outside, so I will show you that. And another view of the entranceway. The rear entranceway. This is where visitors would come in that are visiting the Stowe House. It's a very sunny day here, very bright sunny day. And the Harry Beecher Stowe House was among one of the houses that was part of the historic Garden Day here in Connecticut, the Connecticut Historic Garden Day, June 25th.